gonna do a, a product rather than a, a car. Um, I've, on Pinterest recently, been looking at um, two artists slash designers. One being Amish Kapoor, who's really quite cool artwork, and a guy called Ross Lovegrove. And so, as a product thing, I'm thinking about like a Bluetooth speaker inspired by him, sound system maybe, Alexa like. Pod speaker, I don't know, whatever. So I'm just gonna quickly doodle something, and then I'll end up rendering it out in Photoshop. So just quickly do all this. So I'll try and keep this one short. I say that probably not gonna be short, but got like a square section through there. This is one for all you product designers. So normally I would recommend definitely um, generating lots of ideas, not just one. This is just the first doodle. But if I go with this, I might even make all this dished in here. So, so I'm going to say that maybe the airflow for the speaker, maybe it can go through a pattern on here, it'll go in and subwoofer sound like gramophone sort of style. I'll come out here. So let's just tweak that. Just save that. Into a desktop, so this done. Let's switch to Photoshop. Right, open Sesame uh, desktop. So, um, because the sketchbook's on my screen, I'm going to do a new file and do it to um, 4K. And I'm just going to right click, duplicate layer, select the other file, and then that'll be in there so you can see the difference in the resolution straight away. Scale this up. Okay. So, first thing I'm going to do is background. So, let's go, I'm going to go with a solid colour for this one. Um, then, what I'll we'll do, uh, because that's um, an adjustment layer, one of these things, so it's not just a filled canvas. Um, if I double click on my Color in my color libraries, it changes it by default. It, that's what my gray is always set to by default, anyway. So it's no need to change, but if I change it to pink, for example, it changes. So we'll do the gray. It sounds like a really it looks like a cool color. So 
I think maybe we'll do magenta internal chrome external and we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens so I'm just going to quickly path out the uh, exterior shape I'll try to keep the points to an absolute minimum just so you get nice clean lines Oops, lost the point. and what I love about the new Photoshop is when you've got no stroke on there you can see your line such a massive difference to where it was the old one where it was grey you can see it blue really does help so oops Roughly do it in a minute. I can always uh, go back and, as usual, tweak and whatever. Okay. So, in case you haven't, um, in case you haven't watched any of my other videos, uh, I'm on adjusting the points with the convert point tool. I've got a keyboard shortcut set to O on the keyboard. Um, I kind of do it and didn't realize uh, some people watching this may not have watched any of my other videos. Okay, so, and as you probably noticed, compared to a lot of them, Photoshop, and for those who have not watched any of my other videos, paths, I don't use a paths panel. Um, I want to path that out with the pen tool. It's created a shape layer with a little icon on the layer. To do that, when you're on the pen tool, P on your keyboard, at the top here, I change it to shape rather than path. And that gives you your fill options. So you can fill it to whatever you want, to your heart's content. You can stroke to whatever you want to do as well. The fill could be a gradient or it could be a pattern. Could be any anything really. Um, See, so yeah, um, that's what I'm going to do. Um, so straight away, I'm going to make that not quite black, but a really light grey. Actually, it's completely different. A, a light grey to a lighter grey, not quite white, because then the white won't stand out on the reflections. So. Oops, I'm um, just going to drop that below the sketch. I'm just going to real quick just kind of go back in and I've pressed A on the keyboard, which is direct selection tool. I'm just going to tweak and zooming in and out. I'm holding Command and Spacebar or Control Spacebar to zoom in and out, and as soon as you let go. You can go back to the tool you was already on. So rather than doing control or command plus and minus, which is incremented, I do command spacebar and I can zoom in with the mouse, uh, work on pen or mouse or whatever. And then I just hold spacebar to um, pan around. Uh, you'll notice holding spacebar, I can't pan at the minute because of the view mode. Until I zoom in beyond the uh, size of the canvas, then I can bizarrely pan around. So to get around this, I always press F and I go into this mode, and then that way it's um, much better for um, zooming in. That. So like even when you you can see the whole canvas, you can still pan. So that's F on your keyboard, press it three times, there's three different options. Um, so yeah. Let's just carry on and tidy all this up now. And put some attention into these uh, rads. And try and get the, the right amount of tension between the um, 
surfaces and so on. I want to get the lead in on each of these is fairly similar. So by leading this where it starts to curve around a, a corner or rad or whatever. Um, okay, and let's swap this corner tweak the lead in and out on that one as well let me pull that in a little bit just get the tension just right in the uh, surface Okay, and the size of this rod in relation to this rod doesn't quite look right, so I'm just going to tweak that, put that one down. It's better. So now I'm going to do. inner part of the uh, speaker and just do this really quickly Dial down the sketch capacity and just so I can see this, I'm just going to quickly flip that. And now, what I want to pay attention to now is just making sure that the, the consistency in the, the edge of the material is the same all the way around. So, I just tweak this bottom corner to match. With this one and this one. That's, that's pretty decent. And I'm going to double click on the shape layer. I'm going to click on the, the gradient, it opens the gradient panel. I'm going to choose my default. Click OK. Currently it's got light at the top, dark at the bottom. I'm going to flip that so the light's at the bottom, dark's at the top. When this panel's open, you can drag your cursor and it'll move the gradient. You can do that in a different gradient just so it's more obvious. But you can move the gradient. Uh, so, yeah, I'll go back to that. Clean up with that. Tweak as much as you feel you need to. Uh, one thing I do think I need to do is pull this right in. Do the same on this one as well. So just trying to get the lead in and out of that, that radius just right and I mean it is also too much crown in that surface there as well so I'm just going to flatten that out yeah that's better so that's that's the fundamentals of the whole thing that's the bare bones of the whole design just real quickly going to drop in some ground shadow that 
echoes the shape of the speaker and because this is the bottom layer it's going to just be hidden behind the actual um, speaker so let's just quickly whack that in there there we go so I don't want it to be stroked obviously so I'm going to fill it with I'm just going to fill it with a solid colour for now and I'm going to colour pick that area and I'm going to just make it slightly darker click OK and then of course I'm going to go in and tweak the actual line because something as much as the shadows, something as silly as the shadows can make or break a render so it's worth spending time on getting it just right for any students as well car design or product design or industrial design, furniture design, fashion design even, I would encourage to um, get in the habit of using Photoshop daily, produce renderings every single day because when you get in the industry that's what you're going to be doing anyway so if you got if you just do a nice doodle or a nice sketch just get get in the habit of producing Photoshop renderings so pretty quickly you can see what's going on here I'm going to duplicate shape 3 which is a shadow so I've got two copies of it and then what I'm going to do I'm going to go to the properties panel so you can go to window properties because it's a vector shape layer I'm going to just feather that quite quite a lot and you see it starts to soften off the um, the shadow basically and I'm going to tweak the colour slightly slightly darker and then the one on the bottom as well, I'm going to give that a feather but less feather than the other one. So it's it's not quite razor sharp, but that's crisp. And the feather just softens it basically. So okay, so now I'm going to do the inside of this first. Um, what I'm also going to do actually, I'm going to duplicate the magenta layer. So I've got two copies of this. I'm going to turn off the gradient. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a stroke. I'm going to just do a white for now. I'm doing like two, two point. Now what that's done, because I've got that set to, uh, currently set to center the stroke. So if I turn that off, so the white stroke is below the magenta. That white stroke, if I make that on the outside of this the line only, if I don't make this just one point. That's essentially just giving me my material thickness for those layers. And the glaringly obvious thing now is that it's not quite right. So I'm just going to adjust this corner and then I'm going to adjust this bit as well so I'm just going to pull that down pull this up flatten that off just straighten all this up again okay I'd say that even needs to be much tighter actually There we go, that's better. Okay. And the same down here, really. And I'm just going to adjust these two shadows accordingly as well. So I can pick both layers at the same time. Just make sure the lens is selected and I can just 
marquee select all of those points. And that's both of those moved. And it's all, up, all updated on the fly. I'm going to go to the shape one, which is the main body. I'm just going to click on this icon from the new layer. And that's created a new raster base layer. I'm just going to get my dark grey. I'm just going to airbrush in the shadows now. So, just real soft. So, I've changed the shape of this. Set this to zero for hardness and a big, quite a large brush. I pass this set to 53%. And the flow rate of the brush is set to like 40 something percent. Okay, so now I'm just going to airbrush and this is above shape one just airbrush some tonal value in there and same with the back edge there we go I'm just start, th start throwing in some form and then I'm going to right click on that layer and I'm going to create clipping mask and what that does is it means it only reveals pixels based on shape one, which is the layer below it. So it's this here, that layer there. I don't know if I can uh, increase the size of these icons. They're as large as they'll go. Um, just so you can see better. But anyway, so that I'm just going to turn that down a little bit with the opacity. I'm going to do a new layer again. But this time I'm going to be a bit more accurate with it. So, staying tight to the line where the red is. And again, I'm just airbrushing it all in. And it's just trying to get that, um, that tone of wrapping around the corner of the surfaces. Getting that light and shadow looking pretty good. Okay, so again, right click, clip and mask. So you can see the difference already. And I'm just gonna turn both of those down. And then get a white airbrush. And what I could do is I Get that top surface in there. I'm trying to get that tension in that stretched surface meeting the uh, the end, the left and right side of the uh, speaker just right by playing with how it bends, how that highlight bends towards the edges. Just getting that tension just right, so important. So that gives you an idea of the, the form of the thing, but it doesn't look overly reflective because of how soft the airbrush is. We'll fix that in a minute. But again, I'll right click on that, correct click and mask. And then I'm going to, again, I'm going to turn it down. And then I'm going to do another one. Again, same as before, it's a little bit more accurate. And here. It might look like I've just done the exact same thing as the layer below, but in a minute it will be completely different. So, okay. And again, right click, clip and mask. So, 
I'm now going to get a layer mask. I'm just going to on a layer mask, which is this down here. You get black or white value. And you paint on there, and what that does is, if I just do that, it's the same thing as erasing the white, but it's not actually erasing the white. The white's still there. It's just been hidden by a mask. That's the best way to describe it. So hit that icon down there and then grab a black. Black is alpha. So black hides and then white reveals. You can invert it as well. So I'm just going to airbrush with a, a much harder brush at first. Just go round and just create a really crisp edge. You could path this out with another shape layer or path or whatever you want. But for the purpose of doing this nice and quick, I just thought I'd do it like this with the airbrush. But to be fair, it's probably quicker actually using the path. But anyway. Okay. So, and just by giving it a much harsher edge, suddenly starts to make it look more reflective. And it's still not completely 100% harsh edge, there's still a tiny bit of feather in there. And that's down to the brush being a, a perfectly solid brush, it's got a bit of softness to it. But now I've done that and I've defined that highlight edge, I'm now going to get a really large brush with a opacity of 50%. I'm just going to softly, very little pressure on the pen, just soften that out. So it's less white, but it's still there, but it's just not as prominent as the uh, other layer. So now when I go back on top again, I can now add even more white to areas say over here so you can read that white more against the other colours and values and again I'm just going to right click on that and just create a clip mask again I'm going to use a layer mask this one properly harsh brush this time. This is all just about how that highlight bends into that corner. And what I've just done there, I've just flipped my colour pressing X on the keyboard. And I'm just gonna airbrush the, the bend in this direction as well as in this direction. Or you're just playing with the layer mask. Flip my colours again. So I'm flip, flipping between black and white on the colour of the brush. And just playing, literally just sculpting really. I could path it out and be really precise about it, but something quite nice just sculpting with the brush. And then you want to do the same thing on the other side just to give the impression that the material is reflecting something in the environment whether it be an environment of light or a wall or whatever ok 
Okay, just pressing R to rotate the page. I don't want to spend too much time on that, so. I can easily get carried away doing this sort of thing. So I don't want to give a bad example, but at the same time, I don't want to get carried away and spend hours doing this. So, you can see that's starting to shape up now. I'm going to get really soft brush now. Still on the same layer mask, but soften the brush right down. I'm just going to fade out this portion down here. And I'm then going to flip it to white, and I'm just going to bring back some of the the white up here. And I'm going to go back onto the actual layer, not the layer mask. Layer. I'm going to just fill in this corner here. There we go. That's better. Back on the layer mask, I'm just going to tidy that edge up a bit. So let's give that harsh black back. So this is the good thing about not using the arrays if you want to go for this kind of three form more artistic style where you're not pathing it out to get a really clean line you kind of want to play around a little bit and be experimental it's where the layer masks are brilliant because you're not erasing you're just hiding so it makes it a lot easier to experiment with form and shape and value so I'm pretty happy with the way that top area has come out. I'm just going to get a grey on top. Go back to the grey and a new layer. I'm just going to um, add some value to this top edge. So if the, if the light's coming this way, up here it's just going to have a little bit of dark to contrast that. And then I'm just going to get, in this case I'm just going to get your, uh, no, I'll get a layer mask because I'm messing up. So I'm just going to airbrush some kind of hint in the changing surface basically. So but I'm also going to flip back to white and just bring that, that edge back. Uh, there's a bit of a smudge in there somewhere. Get rid of that. I'm going to get a really large brush, the same brush, keep on zero, put the opacity on the brush back down, which is at the top here. And just get rid of this bit down here and fade that out. Okay. Now I'm going to do a new layer again. This time I'm going to go almost black. Not quite black, but almost black. I'm just going to have a little bit of tonal value on the back side of the uh, speaker bit. Crack the clipping mask. Turn that down a touch. I'm going to do it again, and now this time I'm going to do properly harsh, full opacity. I'm just going to do this bit in here basically, so it's reflecting the ground that it's sat on. Now, 
trick. I'm going to hold shift, click once, click twice, and it, it joins a dot between your clicks with your brush. Quick and easy way to do a straight line. And again, just do this side. Nice and quick, really easy. Create a clip mask. So you can see now where I haven't brushed nearly anywhere near enough. So that's beyond the mask. So just paint some more. Doesn't matter if you overpaint or you go over the area you wanted to because you can just use a layer mask to um, adjust it. So I'm pretty happy with the way that's going at the minute. Use a layer mask, the black, same brush. I'm just going to create that really tight straight line there. It's not quite right. So really quickly, now half a render done, which is pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Just gonna add a little bit of a wrap down here. Maybe tone up the layer below again. Maybe tone this one down slightly. It's just so the, the colour and the value of the colour are pretty close. And underneath those, so I've just got to go on top of the white. I'm just going to pick. A mid tone grey, it's slightly darker than the grey I've just picked by pressing Alt. And quite a big brush. Not, I'm going to put quite a harsh one so it gives you an horizon line basically right through the middle. Where you get the, the bumps and stuff is down to your flow, so put your flow back up to 100 and you should get a nice, nice uh, line. It's not as nice as using Sketchbook. but I'm going to end up layer masking it anyway, so it's, it's not the end of the world. So, get my layer mask. I'm just going to do the same thing as I did for the shadow at the bottom. But I'm going to play around with the height of this horizon line. And then work out. How that horizon line is going to bend around the form. Okay, you could path this out if you wanted to be really precise, but for this purpose of this tutorial, I thought I'd show you this technique anyway. But you'd achieve the exact same thing path it out. And I'm gonna drop the opacity and I've made it super soft airbrush on the same line mask, same colour. I'm just gonna fade that out slightly. So you still read the the, the harsh edge, but it's just faded out quite a bit. So now if I start to drop the uh, the, the actual sketch layer, we begin to see where this is going. Um, not entirely happy with this layer. I'm going to ditch that layer I think and then I'll create a new layer below that. Get the white. bring some much needed softness to that highlight. And 
and note the, the difference that makes these renders. Although this is really quick, I do spend more time on this, but. Um, is the, the fundamentals, the basics are, are there, sort of now. Um, it's just a case of uh, adding detail and keeping your details just right. So just adding a little bit more tone to that back edge because it doesn't feel quite right. Feeling better already. Okay, I'm going to make the ground shadow slightly darker. So I'm going to go back to these. I'm going to just double click on the layer. It's got like a much darker color. And go back to the one that's heavily feathered. And just make sure it's feathered quite a bit more. There you go. That's much better. Have that one a little bit more as well. I just think I'm going to tweak that slightly. It's better. Okay, so now I'm going to focus on the magenta area. I'm just going to use grey and white on this. Uh, same, same technique. Clip and masks. So I'm going to add in the shadow. Simple as that airbrush. Right click, change the layer mode to multiply, blend mode. And then I'm going to do another layer again. This time I'm going to do a white. I'm airbrush, airbrushing the nature of this surface, so I'm kind of doing an arc rather than a straight line, so you're getting that sense of a bend in the highlight. Then I'm going to set that to ultra light and see what that looks like. I'll try screen, color dodge. So not having much effect with the white over the magenta. Overlay seems to have more of an effect, but it's, it's gone too pink. So I'm going to ditch the white, and this time I'm going to actually use the magenta. I'm going to go to my cloud, double click on my cloud color, brings up that color. So now it's made my color that. That's just so I know my brand colors are always going to be the same. I could just pick, but I always want to make sure I've got the right color for my brand. So without doing anything that already looks better. Um, so I'll leave that one, then I'm going to do another layer. Paint is pretty much the same thing, but this time I'm going to change the blend mode. So I'm going to hold shift plus or minus, shift plus or minus changes your blend mode. So I'm just going to change that until it looks kind of good. Um, screen seems to work quite well. Okay, so that's starting to look pretty cool. I'm going to go in with a, a layer mask as well. I'm just going to semi hard brush and I'm just going to tweak the highlight with a, a hard edge just so it looks metallic. Because the difference between that, that hard edge or a soft edge is the difference between a metallic object or a matte satin object. Then just for cause and effect, I'm going to do another layer. Pretty much the same thing again. Um, create a paper mask, but I'm going to cycle through the blend modes again. And see if I can pump up the reflection a little bit more. Oh, 
but this time the direction of the bend and the highlight is going to be different. And then I'm going to play around with the, the fade on that blend. So you still get a hot edge, but you get that nice quality to it. So back to the one that's got a multiply, I'm going to turn that down a little bit. I'm just going to get a layer mask and I'm just going to fade that out a bit more. Then back to the grey, pressing X to swap my colours. Um, a semi hard brush. Sounds really wrong when you say like that, but. Just trying to get the character of that form right in that highlight, or shadow in this case. Set to multiply, turn it down quite a bit. Past two point now, a raise, well, a brush, or even using the eraser. And then, as it hits this rad in here, the, the highlight's going to follow that rad. And believe me, it looks t like a tiny detail, but it makes a massive difference to a rendering. Okay, still on that same layer, that layer mask. I set the brush to it really soft and really low opacity just to soften off that and then one more same grey but this time I'm just going to focus in this tiny little corner here put it multiply again and this time I'm going to keep it quite soft I think um, but I'll just turn it down okay And then, in terms of how the material split works, because there's two materials here, so I want a material thickness. So if I turn the gradient off on this duplicated layer, we'll make the stroke magenta. I'm going to make it one point thick, and I'm going to make it thinner than that, 0.5 of a point. And then I'm going to make it go inside the line. So it doesn't interfere with the white edge. That actually gives you that nice clean border. And up here, the contrast is really good up here. Kind of losing the contrast down here. So I'm, I'm going to leave that at the top. Now I'm going to do a new layer. I'm going to get the magenta. I want to colour pick this colour, this dark colour. And I'm going to airbrush down here, basically. And what I'm going to do is use another clipping mask for the clipping mask applied to that stroke. So now it makes a much clearly defined edge down here where this, the highlights are brighter. Something as simple as that makes the world a difference. And I can even do the same to the white edge. So I'm going to grab the mid-tone grey, hold alt, and click anywhere for a colour. And then I'm just going to paint some values onto that edge basically. Right click, create clipping mask, and then that's applied to the stroke beneath it. Simple as that. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a degree of softness by feathering the base layer. So I'm just going to soften this out a bit here. And I might even get a layer mask on that base layer, just gently run, just fading out that back edge, 
just to give it a, a bit of depth, a bit of uh, an illusion of depth. And I'm also going to do it so I can fade out down here between the shadow. That's just to, to give that illusion of that bottom edge just disappearing. But now, ooh, what am I doing? I need to add a little bit more tone in this area down here now. So I'm going to do it on top, clipping masked. And now I'll do like a jet black layer. I'll just add that in there like that. I might even just add a bit more of that there from this side as well. So I'm just shift clicking at the minute just to kind of add that line. I'm just going to layer mask that up to tidy it up. As I said earlier, you could path that out if you wanted to. Okay. And I might even um, get a white. Super soft white. And just add it to one side. Create that clipping mask. I might just pull that to like a screen or try flicking through these and just see what looks quite cool. Overlay seems to work quite nicely. I'm just gonna so it's adding a, a little bit of value horizontally across the um the device not too much but just enough so the front of it doesn't look quite so flat and maybe even a little bit on this this area here and just yeah that looks much better I don't want to lose all the the shape but and the shading and the tone beneath it but it's just enough so it's you read the form a little bit better. Looks cool. So now I'm just gonna start adding some um branding. So if I go to my textures or I've done some textures before not textures patterns. Uh done some patterns, graphic patterns. So, let's see what, what's that one? I can't remember what it is now. Nah, that looks naff. So, I'm just going to add a pattern on here and I'm going to scale it up. i hold Command to skew it. on the PC so we just skew each points center that somewhere about there maybe 
then I might even scale that up a little bit. I'll set that to overlay. Maybe in the cheek of Bevan Boss. And I'll invert by Command I or Control I on the layer mask to hide it completely. And I'm just going to get an airbrush white. And I'll slowly bring that back in. Could be vent into the speaker. I kind of need that to be full blown. I could mess around and do some proper noise. Um, patterns that suit the, the shape of this, but um, I'm also awesome on this. I'm just going to. Um, why is that not picking? Why is that there? What? Right. I'm also going to warp, but I'm going to go up here and I'm going to set that to an arc, set it to horizontal, just because there's a little bit of crown in that surface. And then uh, you know, I, I can't, I can't leave like that. Just can't do it. Right, I need a new pattern. So I can illustrate her. Uh, let's drop some graphics on here though while that loads up. Hold command. Or control on the PC. I'm just going to skew that appropriately. Make sure it's on the actual flat surface before the rats. Set that to an overlay. Maybe not. Screen, maybe. The last color looks quite right. And then I'm going to get my logo, drop that on there. Okay, I'm going to skew that so it's a bit right on the object. Illustrator new. Anything will do in Illustrator, it doesn't matter what. Okay, so I'm going to go with circles. I'm going to just fill them black. Go into objects. Oh, sorry, effects. Transform, transform. I do I don't know, fifty copies, maybe. Move until that looks about right. So. 
the thing is 80 pixels. So I'll do that at 160. Okay. Cancel that. Let's make this bang on 80. With that still selected, I'm going to do another effect on top of the effect I've just done. Apply new effect. This time I'm going to move it down 40. I'm going to move it down 80. Move it across 80. Preview that. And let's have a look 40. Okay, we do that 80. Yeah, some part. Okay, now do another effect on that effect. Apply new. Uh, do like, I don't know, 25. Nah, uh, 20 will be right. Preview. Move vertically 160. Preview. Job's good. Objects. Expand appearance. Copy. Paste. Paste as a shape there. Click OK. It's coming huge, but that's not a problem. Zoom out, scale that right down. In this case, I might need more, so I'm just going to duplicate that again. And just move that so it looks about right. Yeah, that looks about right. So where where is that? Where do we put them? Uh, I'm to merge the shapes so they're all on one layer. So now it's a hundred by twenty-five, which is quite a nice proportion. And then. I'm going to scale it down a little bit more. Now I'm going to skew it. Actually, before I skew it, I'm going to save this. So I'm just going to go to our cloud, graphic patterns, add. So I've got that for later. Wicked. Now I can skew it, doesn't matter. Don't have to save it, it's in the cloud. Boom. Right, let's make it fit the actual speaker. Okay, so I'm just holding Command, Control on the PC, and I'm just dragging each corner to match up with the perspective of the Render and in terms of where the pattern ends in relation to the left hand side, so centered basically. Um, tweak that until it looks about right. I'm going to move my logo up slightly so it lines up with the bottom edge. So now I'm going to um, go into so I'm going to do a gradient. I'm going to make the gradient the same colour all that across. In this case, black. For the top bar of the gradient, I'm going to make the centre uh, one hundred percent opaque. 
and then I'm going to make the other end zero. Or I'm just going to play with the fade of that. So I'm trying that as far as it can get. Oops, do delete. It's not fading it. Okay, it does need to be centered. Okay, so I've got a, f a gradient that fades in and then fades out. And then I need to double click on the layer. I'll change the angle. So the angle matches the perspective of the render. Let's reposition that Z. Put my logo on top. Move my logo down slightly so it matches the horizon line. But I'm also going to go in here. So that's faded that out that way for me. So I'm just going to create a layer mask. And I'm just going to um, fade out the top. Um, I'm doing it on the wrong layer. I need to put that layer. And then I've got to do the same bottom as well. So these are going to be like tiny perforations basically. So that's the speaker mesh. And then I'm also just going to double click on the layer. And then I'm just going to add a bevel and boss. And that bevel and boss is basically just gonna uh, overlay that's fine. Why is it not working? That's better. Okay, that's better. Okay. Um, boom. And for some reason, the, the bevel, the effects don't quite work the same way. So, I'm going to make a group, put that layer in a group, and then move that mask onto the actual folder of the group. And that way, that mask will get rid of the effect. Voila. And I think that that looks good. More even be tempted to um add a bit more tone to the uh, the underside of this speaker. Gonna airbrush something just to add to the height of the whole thing and maybe drag off to one side. Do it in a few layers and just build it up slowly. Um, 
why I've not added it over the top of that, put a multiply maybe. So what I thought was going to be a quick tutorial has turned out to be quite a long tutorial because I've just gone and done full blood render. But anyway, never mind. Um, and I just want to add a little bit of texture to this material. So I'm going to hold Alt and just drag that layer, create a duplicate. Now I'm going to, whilst that's selected, I'm just going to go filter. Uh, Sorry, no. Hey, convert smart object. And there's a smart object, and they're going to add some noise. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to just play with the, the blend mode. So, flicking through blend modes. Let's see what this does. Overlay. Turn it right down. So now it's giving it like a textured finish. I can go into the, the noise and adjust the noise. Maybe it's a bit too much. It's half that noise. And it'll, it'll change the actual scale of the noise by doing that. So it's more of a metallic paint now rather than a chrome by doing that. I could even, on top of that, do Blur, motion blur, change the angle of that. And then what that will do is it will blur that noise to create a brushed finish. If I increase that noise. It will improve the blur. Mess around with these as much as you want. Play with the levels as well. Need to tweak the angle of the blur. Three more, so nine degrees. Seeing so a brushed noise to it. So I'll pump that up so you can see it clearly. You need that brush effect basically. Or you might want to keep it as a completely clean and maybe just do the magenta as a noise so let's convert that to a smart object again I'll just duplicate that by alt and drag filter add noise play with blend mode let's just see what looks quite good or not Um, generally works best with greys to be fair, so I'm going to go into the smart object and make it a grey. Save that smart object, control tab to flick back to the render. That will update automatically. Go back on multiply. Grain is too much, so let's go back to this. Let's tone that down. Let's put 11 maybe. Okay, let's just flick through. That seems to look quite interesting. Linear burn. It just adds a nice bit of detail to that.
in the layer and see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. So now I'm just gonna do so iris ID sound system. Let's just scale that up, go to my character. So iris needs to be thin. Sound will be thin. And then we'll do the whole thing. What? ID can be magenta. So Boom. There we have it. Nice render. I'll leave it at that. Cheers.